this is Damien Riathope, and I am an axiological atheist, which can simply be understood as a value theory or a value science atheist. Myths of Ancient History is aimed at dispelling common misconceptions about the past. If you're interested in ancient history, lost civilizations, and secrets from antiquity, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, because you will get lots of it. It, it, it is amazing, you know, that what, what things culture has done. I mean, and, and the fact that, that people don't just enjoy what the actual history is is, is wild to me. It, it's, some of the stuff is, is really amazing. <laughs> well, I, I certainly appreciate you having me on the show. Yes. Yeah, go ahead and, and, and tell yeah. us your, your channel, where we can find you, your patron or whatever, your stuff. Uh, yeah, my, my YouTube channel is called World of Antiquity. It's just YouTube.com slash... I guess C and slash World of Antiquity. You can find me on Twitter at Dr. David Miano. A doctor not spelled out, just DR. I'm also on uh, Instagram, Dr. Miano. You can find me on Facebook as Dr. David Miano. And uh, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash World of Antiquity. Right Any on. of those places. But the first place you probably should go is the YouTube channel. Right, and I, I advise everybody, you know, to go check it out and to subscribe and like all this stuff and give them some support. And I it's appreciate, you know, the chance to talk to you. And and uh, so I guess Thanks I'll for having me on. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and uh, uh, have it wrong, but that they're deliberately hiding information, and they they actually know, uh, but they don't want it to get out. And I have no idea why. But um, so there's this conspiratorial idea to it, like oh, they're hiding artifacts, and they're they're trying to cover it over, and things like that, um, which is not true. <laughs> exactly, and it's really great, you know, that you have uh, broken up these things. What made you decide to, you know, make the channel, and then. Uh, what made you decide to make your thing about the myths? Or? Well, I, the original, uh, I guess it's still my, my impetus for making the channel, is I, I want to transition over to teaching online 100%. And I'm developing some online history, ancient history courses. And I thought the YouTube channel would be a way to uh, kind of drum up interest. So it kind of, it's kind of like my, my outreach, you might say. And then I started thinking like, what kinds of pe videos would people want to see? And uh, I did the travel series because I noticed that a lot of the travel channels are popular and no one's doing anything uh, much on traveling to ancient ruins. I thought that might be fun. Plus I'll get a chance to travel. Right. And then the myth, the myth series, I noticed that, oh, Oh boy, the ancient aliens and Atlanta stuff, that gets a lot of attention. And I, I didn't like it when I would go to these videos that have millions of views and they're just spreading these these rumors, this, these errors that I thought, somebody's got to say something, you know. Most professors and all that, they don't really engage with it. They just kind of ignore it. But meanwhile, it's just spreading all over the place, you know. Yeah, and I think that your, your, your show does a really good job of teaching critical thinking. Theological culture. What that is, is an assemblage of artifacts that are united by a number of recurring characteristics. You have various material remains, ceramics, implements, ornaments, burials, ruins, art, that constantly recur together. Archaeologists note this and identify it as a specific culture. These cultures are often named after the type site, which is the first archaeological site that this particular culture was found. Oftentimes, when two different archaeological cultures are geographically close and chronologically close, we can see certain characteristics from one culture, the earlier one, carry over to another culture, the later one. That's because people are always borrowing ideas from their predecessors or their neighbors. But now, what if two cultures who are geographically distant, chronologically distant, or both, happen to have similar characteristics in their material remains? Does that mean one of those cultures borrowed from the other culture? Well, it could be. The further away it is in time and space, the less likely, of course, because ancient peoples didn't get around as easily as we do, but it is possible. So how would we establish this with relative certainty? Well, we would have to have a sufficient number of distinct and unique characteristics that would link those two cultures together and show how unlikely it would have been for the two cultures to have arisen separately and without any communication between the two. All right, so let's say we found two cultures on the opposite sides of the world, and they were thousands of years apart chronologically. And let's say archaeologists found a pot in one of those cultures that was a similar shape to a pot found in the other culture. Would that be enough, do you think, to show that the two cultures must have been connected in some way? No, I think you would agree not. It's entirely possible that these two cultures came up with these pots on their own, right? 
there needs to be more than that. Okay, so let's say both pots had a circle painted on them. How about now? Would you say that makes the difference? Mm, probably not, right? Two cultures can come up with the idea of a circle on their own. One culture doesn't need to show the other one how to draw a circle. But if we get to a more complex and unique figure, then maybe we're onto something. There are other things to consider. Are the two pots made with the same material and with the same process? Is the same kind of paint used to paint the imagery? Do the images, if of special significance, mean the same thing? Archaeologists generally prefer to see more than one similar characteristic before being certain that two cultures are linked, especially if they existed far apart. They would like to see a bunch of uniting and distinct characteristics to tilt the scale in favor of the unlikely scenario that people of the one culture somehow got on the other side of the world, and against the more likely scenario that the two cultures just happen to have some similar styles of art. I think it, 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 your uh, approach to how you uh, deal with others you know, it has a lot of character for you. It shows that you have a real honor in how you treat others. I mean, it's like I said, I, I want to, you know, try to emulate that kind of behavior, that, that or to your in a sense, addressing ideas or attacking ideas and not the people. I think that, you know, it's it's a, it's good, you know. One on that it makes people feel more welcome to you know test or share ideas, but also I think, like I said, it's just a, a, as a character, as a person, how you treat others says a lot about you. Uh, well, yeah, I I, I, uh, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, feel like, like uh, with people like that in real life. I, I I mean, some people they like to have a different persona on online. You know, it gets clicks and views and things like that. But I'm pretty much myself. You know, I just. I just be myself. Uh, I'm a little goofy, and I'm, 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 but I'm nice, you know. And that's just, I, I, I basically want to talk to people there as if I would talk to them if we were sitting at a coffee shop or whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I think I think it's great, and I, I think that your approach is is welcoming in a sense for people to learn. So, you know, some people, it's like I always tell people that uh, a kind of quote of mine that you don't punch people in the face with the truth and expect them to listen. You gotta offer it as a gift they can unwrap for themselves, you know? Yeah. I think that yeah. your, your kind of video approach, I think is, is to me, seems to be emulating and doing that. Well, I'm gonna keep trying. Um, those myths videos, though, do get mo the most views. Um, they're the most popular, which is interesting. Um, you know, even though I, I love making the travel videos, they haven't uh, garnered as nearly as many views as the Miss ones. So, and the Miss ones are cheap. I just have uh, pictures and I talk over it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, but you also impart, you know, critical thinking and how, how to view uh, ancient artifacts, you know, in, in, in a way that... Uh, is going to be more accurate, or the show where, where they should expand their thinking. I, I thought it was fabulous. I was like, this guy is right on. I mean, and I was really surprised, like I said before, that I was surprised you did. Why does this guy not have a million, you know, subscribers? This guy's amazing. It takes time to build up, I guess, you know. Uh, I heard that the average uh, time it takes just to get your first thousand subscribers is like a year, mm. maybe sometimes more for some people. So I made it a uh, thousand in what, uh, nine months or something. So I mean, I'm a little ahead of the curve maybe, but uh, I'm hoping it'll exponentially, you know, grow. Yeah. <laughs> but I've only got like 30 videos, so it's not like, I, you know, I have a ton of stuff yet, but I'm, uh, I'm working on it, you know. So speaking of working on it, what, what is the... Uh things that you want in the future for your channel or what topics are you most interested in addressing? Um, well, uh, right now I'm working on, um, like I said, the uh, stone cutting stuff. I want to show that it was perfectly possible with ancient technology to create these blocks, to put them in place and all of that. So that's the next two videos are going to be on that. And I'm, I'm uh, addressing a couple of videos by Uncharted X is arguing the other side and uh, I've been getting a lot of requests to uh, address his because he is held in fairly high esteem by the alternative people so mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna do a, a follow-up on my I did a recently a Baalbeck video and I'm gonna do a part two to that because uh, Brian Forster who's very popular one of these guys um, he has uh, said some things that I think are worth uh, talking about it has to do with the columns of the temple and so forth yeah I've got a list like I wanted there's I want to do more on ancient Mesopotamia. A lot of people don't haven't been doing ancient, ancient Mesopotamia, so I want to do more on that. But they seem to be focusing a lot on Egypt. I do want to eventually get to the Sphinx because that one's talked about a lot. Right. Um, and uh, I know. I say so one friend of mine goes, "Oh, you need to know. It's like you know, 
11 to 12,000 years old. I'm like, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you have to walk people through it. If I'm just dismissive and I just say, oh, you're wrong and, and whatever, people aren't going to accept that. So you have to, like, really break it down. How do we know, you know? What are the signs? A lot of people don't realize, like, I hear people saying, archaeologists don't want to talk about this or whatever. But they have talked about it. You just don't know that they've talked about it. Right, There's right. all kinds of studies that have been done on it. Um, There's some great videos out there, too, uh, um, that show, that actually demonstrate. Uh, archaeologists don't do it, but, like, other people do it, where um, they will make things, like, literally on video, make things with ancient tools or whatever and show right. you how it's done. Pretty cool. Not that you're saying, like, something a little less than experimental archaeology? Because I know there's ones where scientifically they do it. They remake uh, tools or, or try to use yeah, them. Yeah, this is more of a, from a craftsperson. Mm, so okay, yeah. Like that, you know, yeah. Still um, proving it can be done, right? <laughs> yeah, it's proven it can be done. And I thought, like, doing my doing these videos on ancient history, it wouldn't be political at all. But I, I did open a can of worms when I I did um, my two videos on India. Yeah, I bet. But I didn't realize at the time. <laughs> As I was working on it, I came to realize it. I thought as soon as I saw the video and you mentioned Indian nationalism, I was like, oh, brother, <laughs> he's he's in for it now. <laughs> yeah, so I did ruffle some feathers there. Fortunately, uh, I, I, and I, I think this probably was a wise decision, I addressed the arguments of an American rather than going after uh, somebody from India. Right. And I think that might have been a little better optics. But I didn't, yeah, I, I, when I started researching, I began to realize that there are, you know, fundamentalists in India that um, believe that India was where civilization began and if you contradict that they get upset you know so and I did contradict it but uh, <laughs> yeah no, no it's um, a good yeah, video I'm just I think it turned out all right no it, it's a good video I was just saying as soon as I knew you brought up that topic I was like yeah there's certain topics you bring up and it's definitely gonna you know you know bring out the feather especially in, in those areas yeah another one would be and I haven't done it yet but would be uh, anything with the Israeli Palestinian stuff, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, they care about what happened in ancient times too, you know. So <laughs> I'd be, be uh, careful in that regard as well. <laughs> well, it, there's easy to do landmines when you're you're dealing with people's opinions that it could be myths about history. Yeah, it's funny you think like, well, maybe more recent history they'd care more about, and they do. But I mean, even like thousands of years ago, they care. You know? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, but. But it, it's it's good they care. Hopefully they get more videos like yours where they can learn truth and not you know just keep uh, the non-learning of these you know myths about you know mythic history. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I mean I make mistakes. I I um I always fear like I put a video out and I'm gonna find something later. I'm like oh I was wrong about that. Um, but I want to be honest about it. And if I do have to correct myself, I'll put it in the notes or. Uh, later, maybe uh, make a revised video or something. But I, I'm perfectly willing to admit mistakes that I've made and, and revise my ideas accordingly. Uh, and, and I'm hypothetically totally open to being debunked myself. And I'll, you know, I'll engage with con in conversation with anybody who wants to. Well, that's that's commendable. I mean, like I said, it's it just it's a certain way, you know, of character that you're you're projecting. I think that's that's admirable. And and. I yeah. Good. I was gonna say I got a request recently from a viewer saying, "Can't you do something where you disagree with the establishment?" Because I've been mainly, oh yeah, you know, agreeing with the establishment. So now I'm, I'm thinking I might have to think of some things to do in that regard because I'm not like I don't agree with every mainstream view there is, but I'm just addressing a need, you know. So, so uh, I mean, since you brought it up, could you uh, address anyone that you, off the top of your head, can think of that you? Well, I mean, the air, the only, the area that I'm uh, the strongest in is uh, this is where I, what I was taught in school. I, I, I did the ancient Near East. Uh, so, although I'm, I consider myself an ancient generalist now, and I can do anywhere in the world generally, my field I know the most about is the ancient Near East. And so, in that area, I, I have ideas about um, things, and, and they have to do mainly with. I don't even know if these are topics people would be interested in, but you know, like when things happened, maybe redating something. But these, I'm not talking about redating it by a thousand years. I'm talking about redating it maybe by 20 years. Right, right, so, right. Uh, things like that. But I'm not even sure people want to hear that. Or well, I think that they do. I think it's. I think that that's why it was one person told me because I always post like archaeological stuff on on my uh, Facebook, and he's like, "Oh, this is too hard." I'm like, "No, I think that we should offer stuff and allow people to." expand i mean do we when we have a child do we make sure they read you know mother goose and never anything above that i mean i, I just i find it kind of i don't know if it's 
people look down on people and it's for no, not a good reason. You know, I think I think we should offer good stuff and incredible and and I think that thinking that scholarly stuff has to only stay with scholars, I, I think it's just wrong and it's a waste of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm starting a, a new series tomorrow. I, it was an idea, basically, well, it was to help me get videos out faster, for one, but I'm going to do some interviews of uh, archaeologists and historians who've been in the news. So, like, they made a recent discovery, and there's a you know, cool. big groundbreaking discovery, and then I get the inside scoop by interviewing them. So, uh, I'm going to uh, have, that was, that's good, that series is going to be called Trowelocity. <laughs> right on. <laughs> and, and, so, but, but it's an hour-long, in-depth interview, like, you know, I don't know, Joe Rogan style, I guess. And I don't know if uh, it's going to go over well because it's just talking, you know. But, hey, we'll see how what happens. I, I think that it can. I think that, you know, especially if you're doing stuff of quality. I mean, it, but... I think that you know you got the right uh, template for what's what's worthwhile. I mean, I think that's your quality is a, of what you produce is great, man. I, I thought it was awesome. First time I saw it, I was like, wow. And I, a real challenge is figuring out what to take out, right? Like, is this boring? You know, and right. like, yeah, it's a little boring. Let's cut it. Or you know what I mean? I, I need this. This has to be in, and this is interesting. And there's a fine line, you know, because if you if you drone on for too long, you lose them. So you have to keep them kind of. And it does, obviously it doesn't work for everybody because everybody has a different attention span. But I do the best I can. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And what what made you uh, exactly start the the channel itself was you know you said you were were thinking about you know doing uh, teaching online. And so did you yeah. did you in this sense envision the channel? to be about teaching or uh, the channel was to uh, drum up interest in ancient history I mean each individual video has a purpose but the general purpose of the channel and by the way I forgot it's right. called world of antiquity world of antiquity uh, and, and it introduced your name and and, and... <laughs> yes but anyway the, the, yeah I made the channel to kind of just draw attention to it because so, I figure if I get a lot of interest on the YouTube then in my videos once I have the online courses I can start mentioning them oh and I got a course on this you know and that'll uh, bring people over because otherwise if I just put a course online who's going to know about it you know so the channel will already have had a following and I'll, I'll, I'll have some people to start with anyway no that's a great um, idea so I'm working on an online course right now Ani I figured that was uh, the most popular ancient culture uh, most people like that and uh, Rome is probably number two so yeah and this is going to be like a full-fledged dive course like this is not just a surfacey thing it's going to be go, go into detail so that's the idea anyway and so would you say that your response since you started has been what you expected or has been positive or uh, yeah I mean I've, I've gotten both positive and negative what I've noticed over time is uh, it started with more negative but the positive has been increasing because I think what happened is I'm putting out these videos on Atlantis or the pyramids or whatever and the, the um the people that believe in the, the alternative theories came first. Right, right, right. And they got mad. You know? Right, because they they're like searching it. for it, you mean. Right, yeah. So I got a, a down vote, so all, all kinds of down votes. But then, as people have gotten to know me and subscribe to my channel, the ones who like the videos have been increasing. And so now I've, you know, the, the, the positives outweigh the negatives. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. It's an interesting phenomenon, though. But yeah. But I still get people, you know, you have to have kind of a thick skin. I'm sure you know in this business you have to have a thick skin. And people. Oh, I, 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 I have a, one video of mine has like uh, 1 million and 5 or 1,300,000 or whatever. And. It, it, yeah, it's it's funny. They, they don't. It's like they don't watch the video. They just judge me about how I look. I'm in a wheelchair in the video, but that doesn't say how critically thinking I was in the his stories I was yeah. bringing up, and I was talking about all kinds of stuff, and you know that's that's it's rational and, and empirical. <laughs> no, you're judging me for what I what I you know my physical yeah. form or whatever, yeah. like total. <laughs> but it means they have nothing else to say. Right, exactly. <laughs> I got a comment about like, oh, I listened to him for about five minutes. I couldn't stand his voice anymore so I turned it off yeah okay that that definitely debunked you right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah that, there's always gonna be some haters yeah and but I hope that you know more people that, that follow me you know check out your stuff I mean it's it's worthwhile to spend the time and, and, and watch your videos 
I, I think that, and I want to everyone to know that I did. I watched all the videos and I, I, I enjoyed them. And, I, and like I said, I, I really like the fact that you address that thing with bags because I want uh, wanting to do a, a series on history of Voyagers, as many of my little show. It's an offshoot of what I normally do. I just just started recently, and I wanted to do Gobekli Tepe in ten videos to explain oh. all kinds of stuff that is real about Gobekli Tepe. But that, that reminds me, I, thought, oh, I have to, I have to do a video on that too. Yeah. 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 So, but I wanted to do several videos because I wanted to talk about specific things and I wanted them to be, you know, anywhere from an hour to half an hour. But on my uh, third one, when I started talking about just the call, the different columns and stuff and what's on them, I um, I brought up about how, you know, Graham, um, what's Hancock. his name? Hancock. Yeah, I'll say Horton, but <laughs> what? No, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, Graham Hancock. I uh, address him because he he and Ancient Aliens says it has to be built by ancient people with you know ancient technology or whatever. Like like no, and he said so. He says certain things like that's where uh, you know Arab culture is invented or the first Arab culture. Like, no, the first Arab culture was in Israel. And it's like twenty three thousand years ago, but this kind of proto beginning of farming. But it, so it, it was funny that he's saying, and I just was putting up things. And I was thinking about, you know, how you did yours, where you, you know, you talk to the, the what's going on. And so I didn't like make any comments about him. Just was showing, here's him talking, and while he's talking, here's the facts that show that that's not accurate. <laughs> so yeah. I, he's I, probably number one right now in that whole sphere. You know, like he, uh, everybody, oh, they respect Graham Hancock. What's funny is I noticed recently because evidence of advanced technology, we haven't found much of it but anywhere. He's starting now to um, suggest that, and he admits that he has no definite proof of it, uh, that maybe the advanced technology that this ancient civilization possessed was uh, telepathic abilities. <laughs> Is kind of out there. Yeah. So yeah, I think. But you know what? When you've when you've created a whole market for yourself in that area, and you have book after book after book, and you have all these fans, you can't really get out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you could. Well, yeah. I mean, get, if he was yeah. being intellectually honest, he can say, you know, that this stuff does not match up. I mean, yeah. you can say I changed my mind or whatever, but it's kind of like he's probably thinking it's too late. You know, I'm. I, I have to sleep in the bed I made, you know. Yeah, a lot of people really, you know, believe him, uh, and the ones that are generally I think of as rational people, and start saying, "Oh, well, you don't look at his stuff." It's like, no, he says a bunch of stuff, and they talk about, you know, other uh, ruins that they think, you know, are somehow nothing to do with with what history says, and it's just like, why? I don't. I mean, I have some things where I, I question stuff, like at kind of Hoyek, there's wall art that they say is just hunting yet nothing of the none of the animals are being harmed from hunting you have them pulling the tail have them pulling the tongue have them standing or jumping on top of the animals and to me that seems more ritual that's not hunting that hunting could be. That could but it, be. Well, this of course is speculation i'm not i always say yeah. but, I mean, it's not, a reasonable speculation right yeah. well yes reasonable so that's why i was nervous i talked to another um youtubers who uh, historian that was talking about that because he said something speculation i said like, yeah but this is what the problem is there's different saying a speculation of like I do that it's ritual when it because it, it doesn't look exactly like hunting and I even say it's you know this is my ideas but what I believe but it's totally different kind of speculation than space aliens built the pyramids <laughs> yeah <laughs> these are not these are not equal <laughs> yeah yeah well that's the thing like um, I, I often get told oh you you academics you don't like to think outside the box you yeah know? you don't like you're not open to new ideas and that's not true like we're always speculating we're, you know what I mean and we're encouraged that you went in grad school all that think of some new idea and I remember my even my the people I went to school with they're like oh I'm having a hard time thinking of some new ideas or whatever but people they want to they want you to think up new ideas it's just not crazy ideas right I'm saying? <laughs> well yes um, exactly not not ones that have there's a difference between a logic, a jump in logic, and a jump in a sense faith or just you know fantasy, just jumping out that has nothing to do. Well, wouldn't it be cool if all my socks missing had to do with aliens? Well, yeah. that would be cool and true, <laughs> but yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. And also, um, you know, the way we're taught in academics is um, you can't, it's, it would be wrong for you to teach something is true that you don't have sufficient evidence for. Right. Right? So by, by complaining that academics won't teach something that there's insufficient evidence for, uh, I mean, that's, you know, that could all come back to bite you because you wouldn't, you want them to, to just teach speculations? You don't want them to teach speculations. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? You don't want them to say something happened without them having enough proof. But, you know, so um, let them wait until you get the proof. Then, you know, then they can start teaching it. <laughs> Well, even like speculations, what I think is interesting is sometimes people get into only one speculation. And it, it, there could be that there, a varied amount of speculations could stem, even logical ones, from the same, what looks like the same thing. And it, they could all, in a sense, have ideas that seem right. But it doesn't mean that because they seem right that any of them are even right. I mean... <laughs> Sometimes it yeah. could be something totally different. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, like, uh, yeah. Anyway, but I uh, on Twitter I have quite a number of followers who are in that in that school of thought, and um, I do my best. Not, I don't want to alienate them. I don't want to chase them away. I want to keep them along with me, you know, and hopefully eventually persuade them if I can. Um, so, I mean, I have uh, said things that ticked a few people off sometimes, but then you know, I, I smooth things out, and uh, I always try to frame it in such a way so they can understand where. Where I'm coming from, right? Know? And I try not to talk down to them and so forth. You know, so we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope that it, it gets bigger. I think that it deserves to. I think that that there's enough stuff on the internet that is not of quality, both in both ways. Both that what they're pro we're producing, in fact, of the facts is not very quality and then i think that they're not they're not teaching us to be civil and to be thoughtful and how we even disagree with others or how we you know bring up uh and address different arguments i think that it's it's beyond to me just important to teach in a sense the um how to understand facts but also how to transmit them in a way that you know inspires people to want to learn and it allows people the ability to, I like to me, I, 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 I feel like, you know, it's okay to be wrong. We're going to be wrong. It's an absolute fact sometime in our life about something. I mean, yeah. we should, we should not be so ego driven that we're afraid of being wrong, but more happy that now we understand what's right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like some people like saying science me, is I'll always give wrong. Give an example. Um, I, uh, I did a video on, um, I don't know if I should mention their names, but I, on one YouTuber, I did a video and, uh, he had a very adverse reaction to, um, and he he uh, even came after me on Twitter and so forth. And wow. and uh, he has a lot of followers, and uh, you know, uh, it, it, so that was not pleasant. But I did another video on another YouTuber, and he came to me and said, "Thank you so much." I, I that video really, and I took down my video uh, because you know I, I I think you're right about what you said. So I mean, two. Completely different reactions, you know, about this. And basically, it was the same type of video. Right, exactly. So, and that says something, you know. Well, yeah, I think that a lot of people don't like. I, I, I make a lot of obviously controversial stuff on, on my thing, and I've had a lot of people really not like it. And I try to, even the people that are harsh with me, I've had people, you know, curse at me and stuff. And I really, really try, kind of like what you, you do, I feel, or as like what it appears that you do. I don't really know that much about you, but so, but I, I try not to, even when I'm cursed at, to not in a sense online. Maybe in person I would be not as forgiving. I don't know, but online I when I try to even then go, you know, like. You know why are you doing that and that's you shouldn't be doing that that's not you know just address what you think that i'm right or wrong about and let's you know sense be civil and so i think that it, it's it's easy to you know especially you know in this day and age to like you're hiding behind a computer reminds me of people when they're hiding behind their car in traffic you be the <laughs> biggest jerk in the world and get out and they're like you know acting as sweet as can be so I think that it's easy for some people to be a bully or whatever. I have a really, I'm like six foot and I'm like, you know, big dude. I, people always think I'm a bouncer. I, I easily, my personality in general would not be to be kind or whatever, but I see the quality of it, the value that it has to act that way. You know, I, I like I said, I look at, look at, you know, being uh, mean or, or uh, stuff, you know, and not being kind to people is rampant. You know, all over, like you said, even in a lot of videos. But even if it was, even if you were right and you were teaching the facts, you haven't taught how to act as, a, you know, a, a yeah. thoughtful character of others. So I think that that has a value in itself of how we interact. 
not, not just even that it impresses people, but the, the quality just of like, why do we have character? Because it impresses people or because it's it's a good thing for us to have for our own, yeah. you know? So to me, I think that uh, it's, it's wonderful to me to see you doing things that are really needed, addressing these subjects that are really, you know, easy for to, you know, people to not understand or to have the misinformation. And, you're, and then on top of that, you're doing it in such a credible, honorable way that it respects the dignity of others. I was like, yeah, this, you need to have a lot more uh, support and following, really. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate you uh, having me on here um, for people to see. And I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, I hope that one day, you know, it, it'll take off. We'll see. I'm planning on keeping going for the time being anyway. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm hoping to make lots of new friends along the way, you know. Right on. And so you have uh, um, these uh, ones you're doing now, these uh, shows. And what would you say is the uh, but the ones that you would like to do maybe in the future? Or do you want to continue to what you already have? Uh, I'm going to continue with my existing series, you know. Well, actually, I can't travel right now. So the travel series is going to end soon. Right, right. Um, but uh, when we are allowed to go out again, I'm going to, my next planned trip is to Egypt. So I'm going to have all kinds of stuff on Egypt that uh, wants to do that. And then cause I'm, when I'm there, I'm not only going to uh, film things for the travel guide, but also for the other series, I figure why not, right? Right, yeah. Bird with one stone. I'll have some of my own original video on the Sphinx or whatever because I'll be there. Um, but anyway, yeah, but the myth series will continue. That one I'm going to um, continue working on all the way through the summer and the fall. And then I'm going to do the, this new interview series as well because less editing, you know, it's kind of... <laughs> but also, hopefully the conversations. Yeah, I think that the conversations, you know, are good because even like when I heard uh, this one archaeologist talk, he used the word speculations about his ideas. And I had never used that word specifically until I heard it. So I, I, I would always say to me, or in my opinion, I didn't use the word speculation. And they want or I would say, I believe, I believe this is what it looks like. You know, I would, you know, but I realized, oh, speculation, that's such a better word to identify what's happening. I was like, I'm gonna start using that word. But it was only because a scholar was being interviewed and he was talking about it, then he stopped and goes, well, this is my speculation. I thought, I need I need to start doing that. Yeah. I was like, and you know what, I don't even, I, 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 I think there's nothing wrong with people wanting to come up with ideas about what could be or whatever. Uh, that's not the, what I'm really taking issue with on, online. It's not like uh, someone says, well, maybe this or maybe that, you know, could be true. That's fine. You know, it's when they um, say things that are just factually incorrect. Right, you know? right. Like, oh, this and that, this happened or that happened or whatever, which are not correct. Um, I, 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 and, and also, I like to uh, just talk about how we reason. You know what I mean? Like, if we're trying to come to a conclusion, how do we get from point A to point B? What makes sense? You know, what what um, maybe uh, logical fallacies we might be committing when we go there? I, I like to talk about that. Too. Yeah, no, I think logical fallacies is important because a lot of things that reason why there's so many logical fallacies is people enjoy using logical fallacies. <laughs> That's why we, we, we need to remember because our brains are, are formed with all kinds of biases and so we, yeah. we don't process the world in a sense as clean as we'd like to think and then our ideas are often motivated by all kinds of things you know and that, yeah that goes for even the most rational among us we all yes. have confirmation bias we yes. all yeah it, uh, yeah it's um it's a human thing yeah it, it totally is and I, so I do think it's important to address it you know thoughtfully and uh, I, I think that you know you should uh, do more of that in your videos I mean I, I think it's great and it's it because I think it's helpful I think I really would love for people to reason better and to you know do that often means being taught how to reason better yeah <laughs> yeah so sometimes we just, uh, we just have never been taught you know so, exactly yeah um, I, I uh, I, I learned a lot when I went to uh, when uh, when I went to college about how to think. I changed a lot of my opinions about various things um, at that time. Just not because anyone told me to change my mind. Right. I just learned how to think, and then I changed my mind. You know. Oh, that's exactly what happened to me. It, I I went in thinking about being a um, drug and alcohol counselor, and then I had to take two classes on religion and. Then I became an atheist, and then I started wanting to know history, and I wanted to know philosophy. I wanted to think about ethics. All of a sudden, and it wasn't, I had no desire. When I went to school, I had, that, is, that was, I wanted to be a drug and alcohol counselor. I'm not now. I, I totally, I almost was thinking about, then I thought about social, you know, being a social uh, worker, then I thought maybe being an anthropologist. I mean, it like, 
<laughs> learning some facts about history just like rocked my world and uh, that's why I'm, I'm so into it and I think it's so important I think that you know and it's really I think harmful pseudo history and pseudo archaeology these people will, will say things and it's like like there's a one I can't remember they're called the Brokaki ruins or something in Africa and these the guys like oh they're like 40,000 years old no they're like 2,500 and they had to do with goat herding or something I mean <laughs> well no I, th I, well, I think they're wrong I mean it's yeah, I know uh, one one fellow, uh, Brian Forster. He he takes people on tours uh, to archaeological sites, and he makes a lot of money bringing people on tours. And um, they just they go into an archaeological site. They bypass, of course, all the guides that work for the site. Right. He just goes to the site, and he just says, "I think this is this, and I think this is that, and <laughs> and that's it, right?" Um, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if there are Brian Forster fans listening and they'll be mad for me saying that, but that's basically the impression that I'm getting from them. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that uh, it's it's easy for the people to want to, you know, say things that sound, you know, amazing or stupendous, you know, because people, it's just like in general, I think people like to have secret knowledge and whatever. Yeah, it's, a, it's appealing to think that there's some kind of code. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You break it. And you'll have the answers to life, the universe, and everything. You know? Right, and 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 it will be found in in you know some uh, arcane you know cemetery you know in some bowl that some shaman was burning you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because I've noticed just in teaching history there are two different. Um, worldviews that have existed in every culture. Doesn't matter where in the world you are, uh, you'll find both of these two points of view. And one is the point of view that uh, we progress over time. We improve over time. Things uh, generally, there are ups and downs, but things generally uh, build over time. Right. And then there's another group of people who think that it's terrible right in the, in the present, and in the past it was great. Yeah. They think that it's downhill. We're going downhill. And others are thinking we're going uphill, right? And those who think we're going downhill are always looking back to the past for the answers. Right. If we just look at the, what the ancient wise sages of old said, we'll have it figured out. And the other people are saying, no, we need to work and, and, and continue to study this and learn about <laughs> it, and then we'll be able to solve these. You know what I mean? Right. One's looking forward and one's looking back. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm tend to, I tend to be thinking uphill. That's my point of view. <laughs> well, but I, I think that you know, if you look at the stuff, often you know, like you said, even though that there's some like parts and stops, most of the stuff is constantly evolving upward. I mean, but you know, I think that it it's just amazing though that people will put so many uh, hours of effort into watching videos that are just not credible. It's it's mind-boggling. I like to watch, you know, historical stuff that's credible. Because then I feel like I'm learning something. I just don't. But I know that it's not really about the history, like you said. It's something else. It's something deeper. That It's not really about wanting to learn the facts. Yeah. But also, um, I think to myself, if I could show people how to watch those videos. Like, like if you watch those videos, um, and you're, you're not really, haven't been really exposed to critical thinking or anything like that. You know, you got a guy, and he sounds real reasonable, and maybe he even has a British accent or whatever, <laughs> you know, and it, oh, that, that sounds convincing, you know. If you don't know how to, like, play back now what he's saying, okay, so what is his argument exactly? What is he saying? Right. If you don't know how to break it down like that, uh, then you might be fooled. So I'm hoping that maybe I can help people to even do that, like, after they leave my video, go watch another video, will they be able to break it down and be able to figure out, oh, wait, wait a minute, now what is he saying here? You know? uh, what is the basic argument here? Does it hold up? Yeah, and I think that that that's you know a, a talent that it's good to learn and so it's it's good to teach and it, it produces a lot more quality in the world of people's understanding yeah yeah so i i, th I think it's good so you are in a sense teaching online <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess it is i mean the videos are educational and um and free so <laughs> yeah which which is good i mean it, it gets to more people and i think there's a lot of people that are wanting to watch you know stuff about history and i also think that even um the things like you said going to um places and showing you know egypt as even like a tourist i think that's an important too because it allows you to see the you know the places that are being talked about I mean because a lot of this stuff if you talk about things and you've never seen you know if you're talking about mountains and you've never seen a mountain in your life you know it's it the reference you know can be hard to understand yeah but if you talk about Egypt people only think of it as a pyramid not like the rest of the culture you know <laughs> I yeah. think that 
it, there is a benefit in that because it gives you a better understanding of what's being talked about or, you know, what the yeah. possibilities are. Yeah. It's still hard to find a lot of good imagery, um, photos and videos, videos especially, on some of these sites. And that's another reason I want to go to these places is just to get it down on, on in, in visual form so that people can see, you know. Because uh, if you read a, an archaeological, you know, like a scholarly article, sometimes it's just words and you're just trying to imagine, you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, sometimes there's a drawing or whatever, but not all the time. And it's nice to have the visuals. Oh, yeah, it is. So like I said, I can see where... You know, it has, you go on those, the travel, you know, uh, as part of your channel. I think it'd also be beneficial for the historical stuff as well, because where you're traveling to is not like just sitting on the beach. I mean, you're <laughs> you're traveling to places of history, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of beach travel videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are beautiful. But I, hey, ancient ruins are beautiful in their own way. You know? <laughs> so what would you say is the um, one that you like the best? Or is there not one? Well, um, that I've been to, or that I haven't been to. Yet. Just in general, which which uh, ancient ruin would you would you like the best, or or think it would feel the most jazz to go to, or or that we're you know happy to go to? Well, I think you know, Egypt has been uh, pretty high on the list uh, for me. Um, but uh, I also and I've been uh, I love the Roman stuff. I find that great. And I also because I, I studied the ancient Near East, uh, the Assyrian material I think is fascinating. I would really love to, well a lot of it's been taken <laughs> to other countries, but I'd love to go to the ruin. I mean, Iraq is getting a little safer to travel to these days. I would love to go to Iraq and uh, go to, you know, the site of Babylon and, and you know, all that. That would be great. That's cool. And so, um... You said before that you were going to do a show on Gobekli Tepe. What it, what is it exactly that uh, you wanted to do on that? Well, the the first one I'm going to do, um, which is more of a teaser, I guess, is um, it's a it's a study of uh, when when was the zodiac invented? Because there are theories about zodiac symbols at Gobekli Tepe. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, which I think are. Um, not justified. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that first. Uh, but then I want to do another one on Gobekli Tepe having more to do with people for some reason uh, look at that site as some kind of evidence of advanced civilization um, you know 10,000, 12,000 years ago. Right. Uh, but <clears throat> is that really what it is? I mean so I want to talk a little bit about what do we see and what do we not see at Gobekli Tepe, right? Uh, what can we justifiably say about it and about that, what was there, and what can't we say, you know? Uh, because I think people, a lot more people are reading things into it, you know? Uh, people look at Gobekli Tepe now and they're like, see, there was an Atlantis. <laughs> I don't know how they're getting to that, but... No, I don't either. That's... <laughs> yeah, so I want to talk about that, yeah. That's cool. So Turkey would be, Turkey's another place, because uh, it's in Turkey, that I would love to go to. Um, because there's all kinds of archaeological sites in Turkey, so. Oh yeah, I, li I like a lot of that stuff. I, I like the stuff that to me is after, or I should say after, before 5,000. Things that are like, I want to know like all the prehistory from like, you know, a million years ago until 5,000. I, 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 all that to have a serious interest in. I, I like the, in a sense, anthropogeny, like, you know, in a sense, how we became human. How, how did we oh, get yeah. to... To, to us like you know how did we go from all these other hominids and how they evolved with how they passed down any, or transferred any kind of a knowledge or things and then how in a sense we we evolved where we evolved you know what kind of culture we had I, all that really really interests me oh uh, yeah yeah uh, technically it's out of my area of expertise but I can't help but have to refer to it right because you know I can't talk about the beginning of civilization without talking about what happened before that right right right, right. Uh, so I, I, I necessarily have to get into prehistory uh, sometimes. Um, so even though there is no writing at that time, um, uh, I still, yeah, Gobekli Tepe is still kind of an important thing for me to, to consider. Well, yeah, because there's definitely a big need because there's a lot of people that say outlandish stuff about Gobekli Tepe. I mean, mm -hmm. this, I, I don't know where they, they're thinking that they can, you know, say all this stuff. So I think yeah. that it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard people just say right out, like, oh, boy, uh, the, what they found at Gobekli Tepe proves that the uh, the mainstream has been wrong all these years. And I'm like, it's a it's a new discovery, and we've learned more, yeah, but it doesn't overturn. Yeah, I hate when they say I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I hate when they use that terminology. Like when they go, 
well, science is wrong all the time. I'm like, well, actually, science gets more accurate all the time. And so I don't know what you mean. If you're saying that they realize something could have been done better, now they do it the better way. So now they're more in increasing in accuracy, really. Not, not like science is always wrong in the way they say it. I think, yeah. I think it, but if they make the credible seem questionable, then the uncredible yeah. can seem, in a sense, enticing or possible. Yeah. It's like saying, like, uh, do you trust your mother? Yeah. Has she ever been wrong? Yeah. Well, then you can't trust her. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, is your mother how... ever lied? Ever? Then you, she's a liar. Then you cannot trust yeah. her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so... It, but also like you, you were saying, I mean, even even the, even I'm like I think in the Indian video where uh, yes, in the past there may have been some bigoted scientists. Yeah, in the past, not not like it's a current thing because if people do that now, that in fact I've seen this one. Um, I can't remember now what college, but this one professor said something. I don't know, sexist or whatever. And he he was out. <laughs> pretty quick and so I think that you know that there may have been a lot of you know stuff in the past that you know but then again some of the people in the past were just you know trying to prove some holy book that they believed in that when they you know and some of the people were just adventurers or trying to you know find treasure or something I mean I'm talking about, I'm talking about like way way you know yeah, the 1900s the, or 1800s the or whatever hunter period of uh, archaeology <laughs> <laughs> right, but but to act as if that's what the way you should see archaeology now is just ludicrous. Right, right. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like yeah. yeah, okay, that's like you know we do know America had slavery. We don't currently have slavery. I mean, they, it, it's like cherry picking the ideas. Take uh, you know, it's straw man. You went up with right. something well, that you're not going to go to the doctor now because they used to do bloodletting. Uh, exactly. That, exactly. You know, <laughs> that would be a good video to do on bloodletting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, I, I didn't mention this, but I want to do a, a video also on what is pseudo archaeology. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to do I want to use some illustrations, like because a lot of uh, I've heard someone say this. That's why I want to make the video. I heard someone say that oh they just call pseudo archaeology anything anybody anything that they disagree with. They just call it pseudo archaeology. But I want to show that's not what the word means. It doesn't mean you disagree with the conclusions. It means that they are pretending to do archaeology but aren't. It's about the process, the method right. that they are using to discover something. Correct. You know, it be and I, I can even do some illustrations like oh, please um, do. You know, a guy comes into an operating room and he's like, I want to do surgery and then he goes over to the body and he's like looks at it and takes a picture with the camera and you know, hmm you know, that isn't surgery, right? It's, you're like looking at somebody and uh, so it's the same thing. If someone goes to an archaeological site and just like looks around and takes pictures, maybe takes out a ruler and measures a couple of things, that's not archaeology. Right. You know? um, and that's what we mean by pseudo-archaeology. I want to do something like that. Yeah, that sounds fun. And so you, I'm sure there's... Uh, <laughs> Gonna welcome a whole bunch of uh, critiques on that, also. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? The ones that um, the ones that cause controversy get the views. So my uh, my uh, but the one in the handbags is my most watched video. Uh, the ones on Atlantis, I think, are next. So you know, people watch them. They don't all like them, but they watch them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's good for them. I mean, not, I'm I'm sure just hearing you know, how, like I said, how you kind of teach critical thinking, you know, or you certainly uh, present it for them. To to understand whether or not people do understand I don't know but I, I, you certainly present it and I, I think that's great because it, it's easy just for someone to say oh well like a lot a lot of them will talk about like ancient aliens and stuff and it's it's easy for people to just go oh well those are wrong it's better to actually say well this is why that that claim can't be true I mean, yeah regardless of maybe if there's an aliens or not that they didn't build the pyramids that we we know who did. We know when they did. Why they did. What, the path they did. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it never works if you just say, "Oh, they're stupid. They don't know. They're ignorant." Who, who have you persuaded? Who have you? Whose mind have you changed? No, nobody's. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's, it's good that you're changing people's minds, you know, in a way that allows them to, you know, figure it out themselves, which I think is is a, a, an interesting way of, you know, it's like one of those mystery novels. It's not really a mystery novel because we always find out the thing at the end. <laughs> 
but but yeah. in a sense, you get, you get the reader to try to do it. Yeah, that, exactly. You get them to, in a sense, do the mystery with you and figure it out and think about. Yeah. Like I remember this one where I talked about how could someone get into a house that was locked, and what it was is the roof wasn't attached, and someone got a, one of those house lifting, you know, like jacks, jacked up the roof, got in, came out, you know. Anyways, my point was. It, but it made me think of wow, I don't think about other possibilities. I'm too limiting, and you know, and what my thinking are of what makes something still, in a sense, possible. Like how did this happen? Yeah. Just yeah. thinking more critically about you know analyzing ways of doing things. Like you were talking about, people are like, oh, the ancient couldn't do this. Like think that you're being really unfair to people that are ancient. They did some pretty amazing things, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. uh, and you know, I, I people have brought this out. Um, that it seems to happen mostly non-white cultures where they say that. <laughs> you don't see them going to, to Rome and saying, oh, well, the Romans couldn't have done that. Or, you know, they don't do that. They right. go to Africa, South America, Asia, and say that stuff. Do you, you think know? that that's race and racism going on, or is it just I, I, I don't think it's uh, conscious, but it just, ha you know, kind of pattern. I don't know, you know why um, a lot of the ideas go back to uh, times when people were more racist so I don't know maybe that's that's the reason but um, or it may just be that we're more familiar with the Greeks and the Romans and people like that and it's the more unfamiliar ones that we're more likely to do that with I don't know that, that could be a reasonable you know supposition of why <laughs> that mm -hmm. the fact that that we're more uh, uh, aware of them, it's harder to tell myths. It's easier to tell myths about, oh yeah, those people, that the language you don't understand, the myths you don't understand, the religion you don't understand, yet those people believe this and you're less yeah. likely to go and actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be. Well, because it's like, isn't it Zechariah Sitchin or whatever, you know, they're like, oh, well, this guy read the Sumerian tablets and it was different than all the other scholars that do a seriology believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I did a little bit on him in my um, uh, astronomical knowledge of the Sumerians video, uh, where you know um, a little bit on the oh, and I think was it in the uh, in one of my videos I talked about the Anunnaki. That's his big thing, uh, the Anunnaki. <laughs> right. Uh, which he which is a word for the uh, gods, but he he translated it as um, from heaven to earth came, and uh, trying to say that they were. You know, from outer space. You know, what I think it's is interesting about all, all the gods are aliens. You know, well, and to me, the you know, if Sumerians did use star images for gods, you know, to symbolize the you know a deity. So it's, but I, I it's like, why don't you just think it is the stars in general that they're looking at? And I, I don't understand why it has to be constellations. I know that people now, you know, but why couldn't it just been stars in general? Look up and it looks, you know, amazing. I mean, have you ever felt the awe of going out at night somewhere really dark and just seeing the stars? I mean, even when you know what it is, it's still You're breathtaking. Still it. yeah. yeah, it's like, wow, it just, and then to know what it is is even more amazing. Yeah, and um, in, in, in the ancient times, they were more likely to attribute things to magic and supernatural things, and it's just normal, you know? I mean, people still do it today, so why not then, you know? Yeah. But uh, I do see the attractiveness of believing that there's some kind of evidence of aliens. So, sometimes it's a lot of the UFO people who are also ancient aliens theorists, because it almost goes hand in hand. They right, just yeah. like the idea that we've been visited, you know? Yeah. But uh, I noticed in more recent times, the ancient aliens theory has been getting less traction and it's more on they're they're very unclear about it but they say it's just some unknown advanced culture in the past but who it was we're not going to say you know so they're a little bit more you know coy about it but yeah anyway so but but people will and just i know the two that you know even if that those things in a sense die off some other new you know thing is going to be attached to stuff <laughs> Because, you know, people just cannot <laughs> handle not making up lies about, about history. Yeah. And, and, and I, like you said about the, you know, Indian nationalism, you know, thing, a lot of times the reasons are not like just because they're a history book that are getting it wrong. There's more in a sense, I'm not saying all, yeah. but there could be some that are driven from some sort of a goal to use this yeah. alternative view of history in a way that's, you know, intentionally, you know, I would say malice or whatever, or without positive intent put that way yeah well there, i think there are probably definitely parallels between the way uh hindus are involved in the government there um in promoting hindu ideas and the way uh christians in our government are, are right uh, 
but, you know, this is very similar. Um, so these, uh, these sincerely held, devout beliefs that they have that actually have a play in how they look at history and how they and how that makes them feel about themselves yeah i i i feel when i when i learn history even if it's not related to me that as a human family you know it's a it's just amazing how creative we are i'm a, I'm a creative person i like doing art and stuff and it just amazes me yeah. you know even i don't that's why to me i i don't have to you know it to be like fan, fanatical you know beliefs it can just be that this is really cool stuff even like i'm not religious but I can look at a, a church that someone built and thought, man, what kind of creativity is that? All those spires and stuff. I mean, it's it, it, it is amazing, you know, that what what things culture has done. I mean, and and the fact that that people, you know, don't just enjoy what the actual history is is, is wild to me. It has, it, it's some of the stuff is is really amazing. <laughs> well, I, I certainly appreciate you having me on the show. Yes. And, um, yeah. So the, uh, go go ahead. Us- yeah, go ahead and, and, and tell yeah. us your, your channel, where we can find you, your patron or whatever, you know, your stuff. Uh, yeah, my, my YouTube channel is called World of Antiquity. It's just YouTube.com slash, I guess, C and slash World of Antiquity. And then um, I have, uh, you could find me on Twitter at Dr. David Miano. A doctor not spelled out, just DR. Uh, I'm also on uh, Instagram, Dr. Miano. Um, you can find me on Facebook uh, as Dr. David Miano. And uh, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash World of Antiquity. Any right of those places. But the first place you probably should go is the YouTube channel. Right, and I, I advise everybody, you know, to go check it out and to subscribe and like all this stuff and give them some support. And I appreciate, you know, the chance to talk to you. And uh, so I guess Thanks I'll... Thanks for having me on. Yeah. yeah.